Have you ever wondered what a psychology major might be doing at Xavier? In my opinion, psychology might be an underrated major here at Xavier. So sometimes you may find yourself wondering, what does a psychology major actually do? Well, today I'm going to give you an inside look and interview my fellow roommate and psychology major, Noah, who's going to give you all an inside look about the life of a psychology major and what one psychology major might be doing on a day-to-day -day basis. My name is Noah, I'm a sophomore psychology student at Xavier. Um, so in the psychology major, there are two major paths you can take with a psychology degree. You can either go into a research-oriented uh, path or you can go into a counseling therapy oriented path. I personally am more interested in the counseling therapy path. I was initially an education major here at Xavier and I decided to switch to psychology because I wanted to pursue, instead of teaching in a classroom, I thought you could have a bigger impact on someone's life if you were a school counselor or a school psychologist, something along those lines. Schools, uh, psychology majors at Xavier have to take an array of classes. I'm currently enrolled in developmental psychology class as well as an abnormal psychology class. Developmental psychology is more focused on the development of the child throughout their life and even and the development of a person into their adulthood. Abnormal psychology is more focused on mental disorders that happen to people, things such as bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, borderline personality disorder, more things like that. It brings an, inter an interesting intersect to be in those at the same time because to see how p people develop, see how um, things can go wrong in their development and more of the abnormal aspect than the developmental aspect. The main work that you have to do as a psychology major is a lot of reading articles, a lot of writing papers, and really just reading articles and, and research studies and analyzing those and trying to figure out the impact that those have and how you can make the most of reading those and what kind of impact they have on how you view certain issues. And it's really interesting to just see how statistics, in this, how psychological statistics as well as the emotional aspect, uh, a lot of times we can be emotional about things and form opinions on things without having an understanding of what the statistics are, what the real impact on things are. And reading research studies is a really good way to really understand statistics and the meaning behind them and what we can do to fix certain problems, what certain problems are to begin with. So as a psychology student and someone who's also interested in education, I'm really proud to be beginning an organization with one of my good friends called SFAER, stands for Students for American Education Reform. And we're an organization that's going to be mostly student run and we really just want to, well we're grateful for the opportunities that we have and how we are enrolled in four year colleges through our school systems. We really just want to address and focus on some of the problems that do still exist in uh, this field. Uh, one of the main things that we're focused on, me personally, what I find interesting as a psychology student is the mental health aspect. I think that teenagers in particular have a lot of things going on in their life. A lot of things are changing in their life. And it's important for everyone to understand that mental health in, is very important to talk about and it's fluid as well. I think that a lot of kids, we talk about it more now than we used to, but still not enough. But I think a lot of kids feel like it's stigmatized and that if they say something that they'll permanently be labeled with something, like they'll permanently be labeled as having a lot of stress or anxiety or depression. They'll have a lot of people worried about them and people will always be you know, down their necks about, oh, are you getting the help you need? Is everything okay? And I think it's important to understand that it's a fluid situation, so it's okay to have one bad day, and it doesn't mean that something's terminal, it doesn't mean that things are, aren't going to ever get better, but it means that it's okay to have one bad day, and it doesn't mean that you're gonna, that every day is, from now on is going to be a bad day. Some other things that we are focusing on is improving the quality of access to education. A lot of kids in urban and rural areas in this country don't have the same access to getting educated as highly as kids who come from uh, more suburban areas just because of a lot of funding issues that happen, particularly in places where you do have a lot of schools so the, so the funding is more dispersed and there's not enough as much funding for certain sports teams, clubs, 
educators, uh, counselors to help with mental health issues. That's one of our other main focuses. And then our third main focus would be um, more classes for students that have more practical real life help for them, such as classes in regards to financial literacy, financial planning, things like that. A lot of kids get to college and they don't really know how to, um, they don't have a lot of knowledge about uh, money, how they need to spend their money, good ways to save money, good habits in that regard, understanding how they won't have as much money out of college and figuring out the understanding of uh, how much things really do cost. So more just classes in that regard to really help kids in the real life world than uh, more just textbook learning in classes. Uh, we are excited to be growing. Uh, we are brand new, so it's going to take a little bit of time, but we're just hoping to get some attention and get, just get the knowledge out there about these issues.